Data in this video have been downloaded from the web from a database that has been prepared by La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia. When downloaded from the web, the database provides zip files and you can simply unzip these files and within the zip directory there's a, a VMS file which you can just drag and drop into CAS XPS. The database includes a number of files with a range of different materials and two have been selected so that we can have a look at the difference between the chlorine 2S and the chlorine 2P in two different materials, potassium chloride and sodium chloride. So if we look at the sodium chloride we've got a chlorine 2P, a chlorine 2S and a carbon P whereas if we do the same display in the potassium chloride we've also got a doublet from the potassium here this is the carbon there's the chlorine 2s and this is the chlorine 2p so we've got two very similar sets of spectra which we can use to try and understand how to quantify chlorine since we have two peaks from chlorine and both of them are well resolved it shouldn't matter whether we choose the chlorine 2s or the chlorine 2p to perform the quantification of the amount of chlorine within this sodium chloride. So one of the tests that we can perform to see if we've chosen wisely the background and the sensitivity factors is to actually put on a background for each one of these chlorine peaks and then measure the amount of chlorine as measured by each of these and if we've chosen wisely the backgrounds and the RSFs then we should get a one-to-one -one relationship between the amount of chlorine from either of these peaks. The basic mechanism for quantifying data is the quantification parameters dialog window and the idea here is that we create a region on each of these two peaks using the regions property page and then the parameters that we define using these regions will allow us to compare intensity from the 2S and the 2P chlorine peaks. So let's now focus on the sodium chloride. We'll bring up the element library and the element library contains a set of sensitivity factors. In this case we've got Schofield cross-sections. So we will first of all create a region and we'll do this using the option where it says create when line selected so that when I have as the topmost the regions property page if I select this chlorine 2s transition in the element table then a quantification region is created with the default background type and as you can see there's the background type it's brought in the relative sensitive defect from the element library and we've now part of the way to working out how to scale the area above background so we can compare the intensity from the chlorine 2s with the chlorine 2p. So what we'll do next is display the chlorine 2p and create a region in a similar way. So we'll click to scroll the library and then we'll click again to create a region. And what we have here is a quantification table that has been created using the quantification option on the annotation dialog window. And what this does is it uses region information from the selected VAMAS blocks and displays it here over the data. So if I deselect one of these, you can see that the table changes. If I select it again, holding the control key down, I now see the quantification between the 2S and the 2P. The quantification as it stands doesn't look particularly good because we really ought to be getting 50-50 here but we've got close to 60 to 40. And one of the reasons why it's so far out is because I'm using currently the transmission function that has come in with the data and this is a relative transmission function that is designed for Kratos data and Kratos sensitivity factors. Now, I'm not using Kratos sensitivity factors, I'm using the Schofield cross-sections so I've unticked this button here 
and I'm going to say update. So that will apply to this entire file. So all of these data now will be quantified without the original transmission function. And you can see that the difference has become closer to what we'd expect. It's now 55 to 45. So it's still not 50-50. So what other corrections can be made? Well, the Schofield cross-sections are transition properties that have been calculated. So they really have no information about the properties of the sample or the instruments. And the sample in particular will have different escape depths for different kinetic energies. So although these peaks are quite close, the 2S and the 2P, there may be a difference here in the escape depth correction that's required. So what we'll now do is apply instead of none I'm going to apply an escape depth based on an effective attenuation length and this will apply to all of these selected VAMAS blocks so again we're getting closer we're, we're now 54 to 46 so it was a small correction but it didn't take us to the 50-50 that we desire So there's still a problem with the quantification and what we'll do now is investigate this by looking at the actual spectrum from the 2S and comparing it to what we see from the 2P. Now one of the differences between the 2P and the 2S is that the 2S is much more Lorentzian than is the 2P doublet. We've got two peaks here and they're relatively compact compared to this 2S. So what we'll do is investigate how we can change our, our calculation for the quantification of the 2S. And we'll do this by adding a line shape. So the line shape that's come in is just from the element library. And I'm going to change this to be an LA 1,50 and say fit. So we can now see that the background is raising up a Lorentzian line shape even though it's fitting reasonably well here. Let's put up the residual. You can see that the, the fit to this 2S based on a mostly Lorentzian peak is re reasonably well approximated until you get where the background is, is lifting up. This is a property of the Tugar background. So what I'm going to do is alter this and we'll call this a minimum background type. So this is a new background here that says limits and that allows you to calculate the minimum based on the average width. So if I just move this, you can now see there's a, a really quite a good fit here and it's starting to look much better here as a Lorentzian. Now, although you can see that it deviates because the background is lifting up here. I'm going to move the region limit so that it no longer takes into account the part of the peak where the background is starting to raise up. So what happens when I say fit here? You can see that you get quite a good fit to the data. It's somewhere close to 1, which is what you'd expect for Poisson statistics. It's probably not quite as good as you can get because these these data were collected using multiple detectors and they tend to give you a slightly over smoothed version of the noise, signal to noise. So what I'm going to do now is just make a little adjustment here and say fit again. The reason that dialog window is coming up is because I've got two spectra overlaid in this active tile and it is possible to fit to a set of spectra that are overlaid in the active tile. But we're not interested in that, that's why I keep on saying no. But as it stands, I've got a flat background and then a Lorentzian peak that is fitting the data. And this one is the component. I'll enter C to indicate that this is the component. And over here, I'm gonna change the name here and call it R, so I've got the region. So you can see that right now, well, I'm going to reverse these so I can adjust the annotation. You can see the annotation a marker comes up with the same color as the spectrum that actually controls this annotation. It's the chlorine 2P that's plotted in red and hence the box here is red. So I need to do 
the select the other way round so now I've got the active VAMAS block is the one that is plotted in red and you can see that it's lost the ability to move this annotation table because the one in green is not the active VAMAS block so I'll close that so we can see now that we've got when the regions involved that the quantification isn't the 50-50 we expect so let's now go and bring up the annotation and this time we're going to say both and let's exclude the forward half maximum this time and press apply I've now got an annotation that is being controlled by the chlorine 2s because it's red so and you can see here I've got the chlorine 2s the component is being used and in fact now it would appear that we're getting more chlorine slightly more chlorine than the 2p but by fitting a Lorentzian to this peak here I'm now getting a quantification that makes more sense using the Schofield cross sections corrected for escape depth with no transmission correction a test of whether this is working is to propagate to the potassium chloride let's tile and let's see what we've got here well we've got the, the peak fit here so let's select the VAMAS block in the potassium chloride file and then we'll right click and we'll propagate and we won't fit yet we'll also propagate the annotation and it's complaining that I'm trying to propagate to a VAMAS block that has a different element transition field and that's because this one is labeled potassium 2p whereas the one up here is labeled chlorine 2s but it just so happens that chlorine 2s is also within this VAMAS block so we'll say yes and here we see we've got a, a peak fit going on here there's a slight shift now I actually do the fit This one has a focus so if I say fit we've now got a fit and propagate from the top one which is the region we don't need to propagate components there are none uh, and the annotation will do that also so we now have a region here so let's have a look and see what the quantification looks like So we have once again come up with without too much assistance we'll just turn off the residual if we introduce a background and a Lorentzian and without adjusting too much we've ended up with something that once again is, is in much better agreement with what we'd expect we should get 50-50 there's one further observation about the Schofield cross sections and this relates to doublet pairs so we've got the chlorine 2p doublet which is designated 2p one half and 2p three halves and if we use the Schofield cross sections for these individual peaks within the doublet pair then we should get the ratio of one to one for the amount of chlorine and that's exactly as it shows here however the, the normal assumption is that you have a 2 to 1 ratio for a p orbital however that's not true for these Schofield cross sections if I take if I take the Schofield cross section for the 1 halves and I divide it by the Schofield cross section for the 3 halves the ratio is just slightly bigger than you'd expect that the the one half peak is slightly more intense than the expected two to one ratio but as you can see here the the ratio if we force that area ratio on this this on this peak model that we get very close to the to the 50 50 that you would expect